a few minutes ago, I wanted to do it in a way that I could share as much data as possible for free. Now, this, you know, getting the data other than my time is free, right? And uh, I got I got to pay for web hosting and junk and licenses and stuff. But I'm trying to get it so that you know, just like a lot of the other tools that we have, because this is our standard, right? We want this information to be available to people because the more sources where you can verify what's going on with a, with our our community, our system, the better, right? It just proves out, you know, what we've been saying all along. Mm-hmm. You know, and the dependability. Um, so that got me to probably um, was it May that we had the big the big increase um, this year of seven hundred, and uh, April May time for me forget the date. And man, I had I had ended a stake and I had accumulated some hex, and I didn't see that seven hundred increase coming, and so I didn't stake before it happened. And it wasn't a mm-hmm. lot. It's, you know, the grand scheme of things is what three percent at the time, maybe three, four percent increase um, in share rate. But I was like, there, there has to be a way for me to know, right, that one of these is coming. And that's what that's how we ended up with the share rate. Um, wow! And, and uh, the share rate recently went up too. I can you just uh, talk about like staking before the new share rate just went up and like the day, the day before the day after, like what is the big difference to people? Yeah, sure. Um, in fact, so I'm at the, I'm at the, uh, the front page of this. So I'm going to go into the chart section. So I have a little bit more control in the estimated share rates. And you can see we have a date range up here. Um, that's there. And basically before I, before I change the, the dates on here, what I'm doing is for each day, we know what stakes are still open in the future. And every stake that's open when it ends, when somebody ends it, um, it runs a new function called the new, uh, new share rate function. And the results of that are either the new share rate is higher than the current share rate or it's lower. If it's higher, it resets the, the share rate. Okay. So what I do is within the data set, I, I uh, compute what the expected payouts are going to be for every, every stake that's out there and then run that, run that calculation so I can estimate um, what the share rate may be in the future. But the number itself isn't super important. It's more about when the steps take place because the numbers are going to change. They're always going to change. Um, and that's because the payouts change every day. And I use the 180 day moving average at the moment to calculate for the future um, for that reason, because I don't know what it's going to be. I know the numbers won't be right, but like when we get out here to um, uh, November of 23, I know that there's some stakes that could end that will increase the rates very high. Right. So, so how does that work? You know, yeah. Just can you just talk about the stakes ending? How does that affect the share rate? Sure, sure. Let me throw a date in here. Let's go to one twenty twenty two, and we'll we'll just look at the end of this year. Um, so you can see you can see what this looks like right at the moment. The red over here is the. Um, uh, the actuals okay and then we have the estimated nsr um, running alongside of it so they'll mirror they should mirror each other um, normally uh, so when it's when a stake ends this the way the system works um which is which is part of the contract it's pretty cool i mean it's just math right so mm-hmm. there's no magic on my part um, but when you end a stake you get your principal back let's say you end it on time you get your principal back plus your yield. All right. And that's your total payout. When you have that total payout, what the system does is it says, listen, if this staker restakes, um, restakes um, all of their hex for the same number of days, uh, they cannot get any more T-shares, right? So that's what the calculation does. 
So it makes it so that every time each individual state comes up that wants to make sure that it's more expensive, even if you restake all of your payout and yield, um, your entire payout, total payout, uh, for the same number of days, you will not get more T-shares. I guess that's the best way I could say it. Hmm. And, um, yep. and, and so sometimes it won't produce a change, right? And that and that's fine, right? Because the conditions were such for that stake that didn't produce a change. But other times it does. And as soon as one of the stakes makes a change, it gets applied to all new stakes. And so okay. there are there are times and we go look at the calc, I guess. Um, there are times where You know, the, the changes can be um, quite big. So I have an a advanced analytics section here. This I, I kind of hid this stuff away because I actually got some complaints that this stuff is too aggressive. <laughs> you know, wow. and, and, and I get it because people, um, it, so, you know, there's a third of the people, man, they don't want to even have this conversation. I want to look at it, you know, and that's fine. Mm -hmm. And there's some that can give or take. But then there's there's another group of people. They're really interested. Mm -hmm. So you can go over here to this page and it kind of explains exactly what the calculation is, you know, and um, you can also go to the contract. This is this is actually taken out of the contract. This wording is in the contract. This is the calculation in the hex contract. Mm -hmm. And and so what you're doing is you're using the return, which is, you know, your complete payout. You actually go calculate your um, whatever bonus if you restaked it and you're dividing it by by the, um, the stake shares. Um, and so when you go through this calculation, um, it will, it, you know, it'll give you the same, uh, it'll give you what the new share rates will be. And so from that, what I'm able to do is look at each day in the future. Um, you can see all these numbers here and just what's the highest one for the day. If that one ends, um, that'll, that'll be the new rate. And sometimes it goes flat, you know, so this is a this is a calculation by day. This one is just summarizing by month, and this one by year. And again, the, I'm less I'm less worried about whether it's you know thirty one thousand eight hundred and eighty nine or ten more. It's more about the magnitude of the changes. And so we can look in the system, and we know that a year from now, if you wait a year from now, you'll get thirty percent less in in mm -hmm. um, you know in your buying power you know, 27% less, 30% maybe, depending on what happens. And then if you wait two years, it'll be 55%, nearly 100% in, uh, in four years from now, um, 2025. So so when, when new stakes, uh, I mean, just just trying to think of two of how, you know, are there big stakes that come out that chain that can change the share rate based on some yeah, criteria? Yeah. Maybe I missed that. Yeah, absolutely. And so, again, it's that calculation gets done for every every stake. OK, so mm -hmm. it doesn't matter whether it's a big stake, little stake, you know, it really doesn't matter. It right. it will get run and you can actually go look here at the share rate changes to see what what's going on, because we all assumed in the beginning it would be very big stakes. There are a lot of misconceptions. We all assumed that we'd be very big stakes in the ones with the har highest ROI. That isn't accurate. That isn't what happens. And um, we also thought they would be the longest ones because those would have the ROI. And, and that isn't what happens. What happens is every stake lives on its own merit. And so you have this stake right here, which looks like the last change. It was only 79,000 X, I say only. But it was only stake for a day, you know, and it increased the rate by six. And that's most impactful good. one day stick ever. <laughs> yeah. And there's, there's smaller ones, I'm sure, you know, now the, the magnitude of that change, you know, you can look over here at the bars, right? Um, the magnitude of the change is very small six, but then we had this 547 one on 1016, right? Mm -hmm. And so if you knew that this big change was coming and you were, you were getting ready to stick, stick the day before. Right. So, so and, what would it look at? What would it, you know, uh, how big of a change would you notice? Just, you know, like the stake the day before versus, ah, oh, I missed it the day after. What, what would the change look like? You know, if you had, I don't know, you're staking a million hex or something like that for. Yeah. Uh, it, 
Well, it all depends on the, at the time. I think this was like a, a this was like a two and a half, three percent loss, right? So, but just by having staked the day before, you would have three percent more yield. Three percent. Okay. Now, a lot of people are like, ah, it's not a big deal. It's only three percent. I couldn't be bothered. That that's fine for you if that's how you feel. Don't don't be bothered with it. But for me, long term, that three percent might add up. If I'm if I'm doing a lot of staking. I plan to do ladders and I want to get in and out, um, then I want to know that information so I can get in a little bit before because it just gives people a better deal, you know, um, and you can, and you can see them coming. For sure. Okay. So if we look, and so one way to look at that is to go back to that chart we had up here and we go look at the, at the dates, we saw this big change coming. Right. We knew it was coming. So why not stake the day before? And if I was staking the day before and let's say I, I don't normally recommend short staking, but people do that. Right. I mean, there's reasons people do their staking activity the way they want to do it. If you are going to do it and if you saw a big change coming in the future and you but you plan to skim interest, well, end the stake before the big change. Right. So you can get you can skim your interest and get back in before the, the jump. Right. Um, and, and so this the, is just estimates, right? There's no this is just based on, you know, we're kind of projecting the stakes based on the data we have. And we're, you know, may, maybe well, it looks like what November 18th or something like that it looks like the next uh, one coming up. Yeah, there's some there's some interesting ones coming. And so that gets us to a good, good, good comment. So um, mm -hmm. or a good explanation needed. These are estimated. And I'm, I can tell you pretty much that, you know, the estimate for the 25th is probably dead on. Right. I mean, it might be one hex off or a quarter hex off. But the magnitude of, of the possibilities changes the longer you go out. Right. Because we might have like a whole bunch of payout days up um that'll drive it up right so but that's a good one too i just want to mention it so it's always going up the, we're just these big jumps are just we're just looking at the big increases right yeah 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 and these and this actually shows all of them but um i gotta make this thing sink at one at some point i changed the screen to um, look at oa versus non-oa um, so we're coming up and have passed this date right here, uh, the 22nd, there's a stake that's OA related and I don't expect that this, the OA will end this, end this stake, um, because we had, uh, we had one that just passed in the, and, you know, a couple of days ago might've increased us by a couple hundred, but the OA hasn't done anything. And so I'm guessing the OA won't do anything in November, but you never say never, right? Don't know. Uh, so when we get to this November 23rd, it, it could go up or it might not. If it does go up, it'll set the new base up here at 25,780. Um, but that would require the OA ending its stakes on time. Yeah, so the ideal is, uh, or what you know, a benevolent OA would do would just let the stakes bleed out. Is that right? Uh, yeah, that's one theory, sure. I mean, you know, whether it's good, bad, and different, I don't know. But another thing that those stakes could be used for is to um, alter, you know, alter the uh, the inflation in the system. Um, I mean, there's a lot of lot of possibilities. I mean, I, I guess I couldn't guess what the motivation would be. But normal staking behavior is to end a stake on time and not let it bleed. But if it's a benevolent OA type of a thing then maybe they want it to bleed, right? As it gives back to the staker class. But then you also have a group of people who may say, well, I'm not going to wait for that. I'm going to come and GA it because I can good account it, you know, by GAing it early and distribute the, um, you know, distribute the, uh, the T shares and increase the overall APY for everybody. Okay. A lot of a lot of interesting stuff with us. Anything else on the share rate, or did you want to? Go yeah, this? let me throw this out to you. The other the other thing I I I bring up is this: is you see how when you get to a higher level, um, we zoom out. It kind of looks like it's on a slope, like this. Mm -hmm. But when you get out further, you see these flat spots. Mm -hmm. 
better here. What all that's saying is this: is that in law lo- in a large part our near term changes to share rate, they're being affected by um, um, they're being affected by short term stakers. And so, before this last big change that we had, um, it, it looked like flat steps everywhere. But when you approach one of these flat steps, this bubble keeps getting in the way. Anyways, when you approach one of these uh, these flat step ups here like this, what will happen is people will come in after the new share rate is set. And based on the rules, right, and the calculation, they they have to, they will be increasing the share rate on top of it. So in the end, you'll never see flat steps like this. You'll always see, as long as people are staking, you'll always see a gradual incline. And so when we get to one of these these steps it's not going to it's not like um it's not like the estimate is it's going to stay at this value the whole time what will happen is it'll fill in and you'll see that the the shape of the curve will go up and and just kind of fill in this whole thing until we get that change much like we can see here on this one gotcha yeah and believe me i i know i'm, I'm probably not doing a great job of explaining this um no, you so are. The, you are. The, the too long, you know, the too long don't read is share rate always goes up. I proved it, <laughs> yeah. but yeah. but a thousand other people proved it before. If you're if you're looking to, um, you know, get a little bit of an advantage um, when staking and, you know, and, and doing some other things, particularly with Hadron and Icosa, um, if it makes sense, you know, get in before these changes, you know plan to do things before the big changes um and i added the button here for the base without oa so you can see the difference between oa and non-oa because the oa has these higher numbers but eventually we catch up to the oa this is a regular stakers will catch up anyways and the oa was just smarter about it and so when we look at that and we say this we go uh we go to 2023, um, you know, we start seeing numbers like 30,000 by the end of next year, which is that 30% increase, and then so on and so forth. You can use our sliders up here to go slide it out and see what the curve might look like. And if you don't like the calculated number, you can look at um, what we think the system performance shows, which is a much higher number. Um, this is based on the Hopper multiple. There's a guy Hopper on uh, on Twitter who went backwards and uh, did the mathematics to figure out how the system is likely going to operate. And then you can actually com- you can compare those models to see what they look like. And you can see the Hopper, the Hopper in blue, and then the um, estimated share rate down here at 128. I was almost afraid to publish this. Um, hmm. I don't want, I don't want to call this mass hysteria, you know, cats and what, dogs living together, what, you know, what, what, what are the ways that you could interpret this? You know, what, I guess, what are the, yeah, like, why, why would that be the case? Um, that it's going up like this. Mm-hmm. Um, it, it, it has to do with that, that ratcheting of the share rate, which is the genius of the system. Um, because as the share rate ratchets upwards, um, it ensures that people age out, right? And yes, it's going to be 15 years before Quattro Cinco's age out. But people who took really huge positions for four years, they're out after four years, right? They've got, they've got to get back in and pay a m- m- much higher rate, which ensures meat on the bone and distribution of T-shares to other people, new people who are coming in the system. Um, so... That's kind of like that's more like monologue about it. But looking at the at the chart here, I kind of think that my uh, estimate here is wrong and low, and it will likely be somewhere in the middle between um, the Hopper multiplier and the estimate. And if we see significant changes in uh, staking behaviors, it could go much higher, which is crazy, right? Because that's a ten x in ten years, right? I mean, roughly yeah. something like that. You know, or not 10x. It's a this one's a 10x, and I guess that would be 13 years, right? And this one's kind of like a 
like a 5x. So yeah, share rate's going to go up between 5 and 10x. And the best time to have staked is right now for share from a share perspective. Uh, but then question. Yeah, go ahead. Go ahead. No, uh, I just had a question from, from Paul. Uh, so anyway, just this tool to factor in, uh, basically uh, a bits and Patrick's tour in the USA, uh, they were onboarding average people. Yeah. I guess the question could be uh, what, uh, how could we see a mass marketing campaign play out in this chart or, or any other chart? Yeah, sure. I've, I've spoken to Patrick about that. Um, you remember they did their um, two years in a row, right? They came up with their payout model. And um, we, we've come up with a, a payout model that is really close, um, that, that, they, that Patrick says looks pretty close to what he would expect as well. Um, but that, that's kind of like feeling your way through it, right? Like we felt our way through. What do we think it will probably be like in the future? A more analytical way to go, which is really hard to do and is kind of what was, what was just asked in this question would be, Let's predict all the things that might affect share rate. And so that means you need to predict, you know, how many people are going to end stake? Are they going to emergency end stake? Are they going to term? You've got to, you've got to predict um, how much, how many new stakes we're going to get in and what they're going to be, what that staking behavior is going to be like, and then mash that all together to be able to say, yes, I think because they're going on tour, and uh, or they did go on tour, um, you know, on each day, there's going to be this effect, you know. Um, sure. So, yeah, we can we can definitely throw what ifs in there and try some different things for sure. I mean, we have the different models that are out there. Um, but what's what's interesting is that, you, you know, for. This is all layers. Um, so anything new will just add on top of this. And the more staking activity, um, the more you'll you'll see these changes go up. Nice. What well, you want to go through a couple of the you know I guess maybe one or two of the most popular portions of the site outside the the share rate, um, just give people you know an idea of uh, the other the other features of the site. Yeah, absolutely. And I I um, I just a, a side note. I've started putting. Uh, I did start putting uh, some videos up on my, my YouTube channel that are kind of instructionals so that people can go through and, and look at the stuff. Right. Yeah, man. Um, a lot of people in the comments are, are thanking you for the website and just saying you're the man and, and just, uh, just really appreciate this data and walk through too. You know, who's the man? Philip Banks is the man. He's the man. Phil Banks. Phil up Banks. I like Phil up. Uh, yeah. Yeah. I'm looking to see where my, my envelopes are, man. He, he hooked me up and I, I got some uh, some hex envelopes oh, okay. um, for, for tipping and stuff, man. So now I'm like, it feels mm. key, it feels geeky as hell. But I, I, you know, you go to a restaurant, and go to dinner. I, and like I, it. I hand him a, I hand him an envelope that has hex dot com on it. <laughs> I'm going to add that to the list of uh, the marketing it, conversation I'm going to have. Actually, that's a great idea. Wow. Now the, uh, the dream, the dream is I'm handing out thousand dollar tips. The reality is, I'm handling uh, handing out twenty dollar tips. But I don't know. It's, it's okay. I, I love it though. I mean, you really, you know, people see a, an envelope that has something you know nicely written on it. A lot of times, they don't throw it away. They, you know, they keep it, they save it, or they do something else with it. So I like it. Yeah, yeah. I appreciate that, and I, I appreciate everybody's comments very much. All right, um, looking at the site from the beginning, just coming into it. Um, there's some data up here at the top that you can view. I want to explain that. You can fool around with this limited chart for the share rate. This is most important to people. And so I, I put the short-term one right here on the screen. Just looking for more and better ways to share data out. Probably the, you know, probably some of the things I would expect in the future um, that I, I would want people to come look at things like the fire resources that will be up here, um, which will just, I'm going to try to codify some of the approaches, put some worksheets up there, some checklist that type of stuff, and uh, possibly some staking calculator type activities. Um, staking strategies, most people probably know a bunch of this stuff already, but it is my take on building out ladders and those strategies awesome. the idea to give some give people the idea of what they need to do um 
the actionable insights is another thing that I'm trying to build out um, further and, and refine. You know, it's great to have 1,000 pages of data and charts, but re reality is I can't even look at all this stuff, right? So I, I need to know what's what and what's when, you know? And so I don't know what it looks like in the end, but maybe it looks more like this. Maybe it looks like a list of these are the key things that we see coming in the future um, that you add with other information you're getting from Hex Daily Stats, from Hex Vision, you name the website, um, you know, whether it's Gerardo or anybody else um, and combine that data. But there's interesting things you can do, you know, that helps remind me even for myself, um, hey, you know, the price is down at, at three six right now. Uh, the last time this updated, it might be a little higher. I think we had a pump. I know it's been going up and down, but that that's off the high. It's ninety percent cheaper, ninety two percent cheaper. When when is a better time to buy? You know, those types of things, yep. um, because it makes sense to pop this before I go into hex staking data um, resources. I'm trying to add as many. Uh, resources that i use as possible here kind of probably not the best way to populate this but we'll get oh, nice. rh we'll get an rh max out here <laughs> at some point but that would be and, amazing you know, uh, shout uh, out yeah. pulse tube for sure pulse tubes in the chat too they're uh, they're saying nice things about the uh, hex fire yeah they, there's the nice people man i, I mm -hmm. you know I, that I know there's a dark side to how people act today but nevertheless we have the most awesome community we do. Awesome. I mean, it's just yeah. great. So if people looking for or looking for or wondering about certain things, you can come look at look here to go click through to these different sites. And then probably the most, I think, useful thing is our hex staking data for people. Hmm. And so what is this is these this is every every hex stake um, that exists out there. Uh, we load it up. I load it up every night after. Um, UTC midnight. Um, it is automated, so updates several times a day. Um, one of the cool things about this is this is a collaboration really with Hex Daily Stats. I uh, can't can't say enough about Tagash and Kodiak and and the guys who really made that work. Um, so this is where the data comes in from, and I put it. I I go through and analyze it and add a whole bunch to it. Um, so you can come in here and see that there's. 712,000 stakes that have been made at this point. Um, counter there at the bottom. And then just sli start slicing and dicing. You know, so if I want to nice. know, if I want to know about a particular, um, you know, about a particular stake, I can come grab the address, drop it in here. I can take my, my addresses from my, um, you know, from my ladder and put them in comma separated and just see all of your stakes, right? Just pick, just pick somebody's ladder um, and see all the stakes listed. Uh, do it by start date, etc. Like, I don't think um, if I click through to one, let's see what'll happen. Here. I don't think you guys get, um, I don't think it changed your screen. I'm not looking at it. So, but maybe it did. So I just grabbed an address randomly. Yeah. And just threw that in there. So we see we have a staking order, right? And I can come over here and it could be mine. It could be somebody else. It doesn't matter. You know, I can come over here and say, okay, I want to put it in order by date. Um, we've got some stakes. All right. And I want to say, okay, I see that they're ended because I have the end date, but I could have said, hey, show me only the ones that, um, Show me all the only the ones that aren't GA'd, or show me the ones that are GA'd. And like this one had a had a good counting done on it, you know. Mm. Um, show me the ones that are ended, you know, etc. And just see all of that that information, um, and you'll see some of the specs about that stake here on one screen. The kind of T shares that were involved, you know, etc. And and you know what the current value is versus what the cost was at the time of the stake. Um, you know, this one's just slightly underwater, you know, and just calculating that out so that it's very quick and easy to go find that. I, I use I use this quite a bit to just research, you know, new addresses that show up um, on Hex Whale. Very cool. Wow. 
Is there anything so, the site doesn't do? Is there something? Is there some feature that people have asked for that it doesn't do? Yes, um, this is not a Web three implementation, so this is not the kind of thing that's going and reading um, the blockchain directly and able to transmit, uh, you know, transactions or anything like that. Um, there's that, and then. You know, there's always more. There's always like a ton more things that, data-wise, that haven't been developed yet, to be able to bring in. Like, I'd like to be able to get a bird's eye view, of what's happening on uh, the Ethereum chain, for instance, and later uh, Pulse chain. And by that, what I mean is like API level type of access. Um, but it, you you find that what ends up happening is this: is I'm digesting data that other people have already published. Right. Some of it I go get myself. Um, but what we ends up happening is to be the one has the data to publish it. It becomes incrementally harder and harder and it gets progressively more expensive. You know, so it it, it would not be uncommon to, to get access to that kind of data that you got to pay, you know, four or five thousand dollars a month, you know. Yeah, and um, it, it, so it's not it's not crazy talk, and I think Alex from Hadron was saying his bills were much higher, much higher. And uh, yeah, he's building some crazy stuff over there as we speak. Like oof, so, summer twenty twenty three, I think a lot of projects are going to be hopefully pull will be out and all that too. But I think a lot of there'll be a lot of good infrastructure changes in the ecosystem that I'm very excited about in the next six months or so. Yep, me too. I, I, there's so much. And I, I won't go through all this stuff with you guys, um, but there's some different charts that are here that are really cool you can get into. Um, like, for instance, you again, you can come look at um, addresses and put your addresses in and just see how much hex um, is estimated to be coming out for those addresses um, each year where you can take it and drill down to the month level and go see each month. Oh, the emergency in-state calculator. I definitely wanted to show that. Oh, yeah, we'll do that one, too. We'll do that next. And then you can go down even further and go down to the day of the month and see it. And if you want to change your, you know, change your numbers, you can change them over here as far as units. Hmm, I broke nice. something. Uh -huh. I'll have to fix that, see what that is. Um, let's go back out. Um, all right, we'll come back to that. I'll come back to that anyways. So there's some different charts here that you can see, including estimated total supply, um, cost of T-shares. This, this one's kind of neat to see what people paid for T-shares that they're, they're, you know, they have stake today. All the Hex Daily Stats stuff. I'll do a, um, Eventually, I hope maybe I'll get a video in on a bunch of this stuff. Uh, I plan to do one on this one. This is a new addition today, um, which is, you know how we were just looking at that T-share rate chart? Mm -hmm. Well, somebody said, hey, that's that's okay, but it's harder for me to understand when rate changes are happening. And so they asked for this one. And if I if I bring it down to days, you can see on each individual day, what the predicted change is going to be. Mm -hmm. you know? And so it gives you an idea of, of when you would want to come in and do your staking behavior, you know, do your staking before the big changes that might occur, you know? So and cool. uh, so these are, these are real big changes out in 24, whatnot, that'll happen. Yeah. All right. Um, so the, there's this charts area, and let's get over to look at what you're, you're asking about. So I have, um, from a navigation perspective, people come down here and go to our, um, go to my, my little thing. I'll go to home and get it. Go to my little drop down, my little thing. And um, it, what it should have here is my, I'll have to, have to reset this for a second, is um, a list of different um site you know different pages and one of the ones we want to go to is um we go look at like you see derivatives there 
is um, advanced analytics. Just as an example, we'll go there. I just want to confirm you can see the Hexfire screen, right? Yes. Okay. So in here, you can come look at, again, more tables of data, different things that might help you. This was the share rate we looked at before. Best times to stake. This tells you kind of based on uh, out, you know, outflow of hex. If you're trying to get your hex out before a whole bunch of other hex comes out, you might want to, you know, end a stake before that. Um, you can look at OA stakes here. You know exactly what we think the OA has, um, and that's suspected, right? OA related stakes. You can look at deflationary data, kind of telling you like when, when is it that you know, the first stakes will start coming out that the people can't, even if they go out Quattro Cinco, they can't get more, more T-shares, that type of stuff. Mm -hmm. um, so the more nerdier people might really like this into the numbers we get into that stuff. And then this is probably another good spot for the general viewers. Is if you go to the advanced staking data page, I've tried to break it up in different pieces um, because here, here's the thing is we get all these, these stakes and we want to know all this information about them, but you can't fit it all on one page. And I've never, we, we've never gone through the process of building out like, you know, completely what the best way is to view data. Mm -hmm. um, so it gets confusing to me and probably to other people to look at open stakes when I'm looking at ended stakes um, in, in, in certain contexts, because I want to know more. I want to know one set of data about opens and another about um, ended. And I can do some fancy stuff, you know, we can click through and all the rest. But at the moment, what I did is just um, broke them out. So if you wanted to see. Um, your estimated payouts um, instead of it in chart form, but in table form, you can come in here and you can you can select different um, you know select different addresses. And in this case, let's go look at the the Maximus stuff, right? Trio. I put them up here as to be selectable, so you can get them. And we can see that um, you know as <clears throat> expect as expected. You know, we've got one 23, 25, 32, and 37, and basically look at, at very similar hex staking data that we were looking at before. Nice. But, it, but it's just on this page, you know? And then um, other other oldies but goodies I like to look at are things like, hey, which, which stakes are bleeding? Because I've got a whole bunch of them. But some group of people started... Uh, good accounting those for us, right? So mm -hmm. if I go look today and I want to see um, what I think the estimated late penalty is, and I have it here, right? This is full on. There ain't that much late penalty hex left. This used to be over over a billion at one point. Mm -hmm. And so um, every day, almost every day, somebody um, good accounts stakes. Mm -hmm. Now, it's not that isn't my recommendation that you do that because I'd rather see them bleed all the way out but the only way that these hex penalties come out to us is if somebody um, good accounts the stake where it gets ended. Um, right. So if somebody wants to really deep dive in here, they can do that. And you can see the results of the good accounted ones here. You can see the actual penalties and nukes are just fascinating. Man, yeah. it's just... Yeah, when, I've been seeing hex, hex well bot go yeah, post some of those. Yeah, when people just don't, care to look like i mean my god man uh i Oof. i mean now I, I appreciate it if somebody did it on purpose thank you but my god i know wow. now some of the early ones maybe it's not so bad you know i mean if you if you screwed up on the first day like you see you we used to see this a lot people would think that they could end something um, early and you can right if, as long as you if you put a stake in today and as long as you get it processed and ended before the end of the day you know before UTC um, zero 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 you, there's no penalty right so you can start and end a stake the same day but you go over that time frame you're dead you know yeah um, 
So anyways, you can, so if people really want to do this, you can peruse. And what's been happening is as people get in to look at these and they want to know more, um, they just contact me and I'll add more things to it because there's things I just, I just don't know what people want, you know, and I can't add everything to everything. You know, it's, uh, there's too much to do. So I'm just working on fine tuning it. Um, and then you asked about this a few minutes ago. So I'm going to, I'm going to look at this a little bit further um, and I've got, got some changes to come in today. Somebody asked me about this. Uh, let me see if I can get this guy to get this copy. <clears throat> so you can throw a stake in here or an address in here and look at the stakes for it. And this will go through and give you an estimated um, penalty and what your payout will be. I don't know what address I just picked, but and my, it, it's some funky address that's got 3,700 stakes. Um, wow. And so that might be one of the, I, I don't know which, which address it is. Maybe somebody's familiar with it. But I can look at all the expected ends, you know, and show this is these are all the ones that are going to be ended. And what their emergency end stake payout would be um, if they were ended right now, you know. Gotcha. And so, you know, combined with some other data, people might be interested in looking at that. It's not an endorsement for emergency end staking because I really don't like that, even though I've done it. But I don't want anybody to get the idea this is a method to go forward. Um, but what I was asked about is somebody said, well, tell me about a, um, a stake uh, that is over 50%. And what would that, you know, what, what would you get more T shares? Would you get more T shares if you re, if you ended it and restaked it? So that's what I did. So we throw that address in here, and I'll show you. So we took a look at the stake, and again, I'm not advocating for it, but this is what the question was. The guy wanted to know, hey, what what if I end this stake? It wasn't his stake; it was an example. What if I end the stake early? All right, we served over fifty percent. Um, and I restake it, what would happen? Well, if this particular stake was ended early, they would get about a 12,000 payout, you know, about 12,400. So they still would be an ROI. It'd be a little tiny ROI, right, from the beginning. Um, but the T shares that this stake had originally was 0.95 T shares, and they would get one and a half T shares if they restaked Quattrocinco. Now, at first, it's still, it's still like mind boggling why you would consider this, but if you insert the idea of HSI stakes into your mind, all of a sudden you're like, maybe it's something for me to think about. I don't know if I'd endorse it. Hmm. Um, because I, but I, I, I tend to look forward, not back. So I'll do new stuff, but I, I don't think I, I mean, I did have that time, like I told you before, big pity. Um, and I did it. Um, but I don't think that I want to be in that business because I don't like giving up that yield. Man, I had to wait a long time and for yield. Yeah. Sure. Um, so if people yeah. want to look here, you can come look and um, and see what what might be um, you know the penalties and just verify it before you take any action. You know, with stake or app or something else. <clears throat> 